this is Moon Isaac Barry from Mary Challenge Lab. Today we will be looking at Maxwell's first equation. Now let us salute Matt. Wait a second. A man with a large beard associated with Osama bin Laden making controversial tweets. I know that's what you guys out there are probably doing. But chill! Chill! Now let me tell you some key differences you can use. <laughs> to differentiate Osama from Maxwell. Osama is one of the worst terrorists of the entire world, and Maxwell was one of the best scientists in the entire world. Plus, his big beard was also white, and he doesn't look Middle Eastern. So those are some key differences you can use to tell terrorist Osama from scientist Maxwell. They both end with ist, but trust me, trust me, one is much better than the other. Alright, uh, alright, now, young Maxwell and young Faraday. Alright, so Maxwell equation number one. First, let me demonstrate Faraday's law of induction. And this was said by Faraday himself. Give me a magnet and give me a copper coil and I will light up the entire world. And as you can see, the galvanometer is moving very slightly whenever I take it in and out. So that just measures the current. But now, you idiots are saying, Hey, you said you would light up the entire world. Where is our light? Well, I got a light right over here. Hello, light. All right, so let's take our copper coil, and let's take our light, and let's see what happens. Sorry. As you can see, when it goes down, the thing lights up. Of course, it doesn't go light up when I go up, but it lights when I go down. This, this is Faraday. And this is Maxwell's equations. All right, so Maxwell's equation number one. So first, to understand Maxwell's equation number one, so here, is our electric field. This is our electric field vector. And now the plane is kind of like a plane in geometry. So like if I do this, then it catches most of the electric field. The flux is just how much of the electric field goes to the certain area. That is the plane. It catches a lot of people. What happens when you do this and make the plane completely parallel to our thing, our electric field? Well, then you get zero flux because it's parallel. That means nothing will go somehow up and through it. So that means that flux is really just how much something goes into an area. So electric flux is E A. You can also put the dot product or you could put the cosine theta. Now let's do it the differentiation way. Which I know might be hard to say, but you'll get it. So divergence dot product E is equal to rho, which is charge density. our good old friend epsilon naught, which you already know. Actually, you don't know. So let me just write him down. Epsilon naught is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. It's just a constant, don't worry about him. All right, and now what was this famed second way? Well, also known as Gauss Law. Thank you, Gauss. He sponsored this video, even from a grave. So Gauss law, also known as the integral way, is integral, onion ring, which means it's a closed integral, really. E dot product dA, hey, is equal to 
steel, which of course is George, over our good old friend Epsilon Not. You'll be seeing him a lot, so just write this down if you have any paper. And you may think this is the area, but don't worry, that's very common in long students. I mean, that's almost the first thing some th people think of when they see a plane. Not like the airplanes. All right, so it is to the angle of the electric field, then the better the electric flux is. So, that's what the area vector is. You see, E over D, uh, well, E dot product DA, <coughs> It's really just a cool way to say E with D A. And now this is just a really nice way to say yes. And E A is also equal to, remember this, Q over our good friend Epsilon naught. And so we get E, well, four pi r squared, equals q over e naught. Dividing everything by 4 pi r squared helps in this kind of situation. And now the thing is, by definition, well not by, uh, uh, well by definition, it was defined to be that when people created it. By definition, k is 1 over 4 pi r squared, <coughs> and no, it's actually 4 pi e naught. Uh, well, otherwise, why would it be a constant? So that means that this crap is really just k, giving us kq over r squared. And this may look familiar to some of you. That's right. That's the equation for electric field. And that's the derivation of this. That's how we know it's true. So now, this just leaves us with 1 over, well, something monster, times, well, our good old friend, Epsilon naught. This leaves us with something monstrous that eventually leads to 9 times 10 to the 9. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.